Why did I pick hot tea on a 114 degree day? Hey, it's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? And I'm here to talk about, it's not even in my hands right now. <laughs> Where did I put it? I hope everybody had a wonderful 4th of July and I took a little bit of a break around the holiday but I'm back to talk about a phone that I think is absolutely killing it in terms of photography and in videography because I used it as a vlogging rig. That's this, the Huawei P20 Pro. Now I'm sure I don't really need to tell you too much about this device that you haven't already heard from other reviewers or other publications, uh, but I will go through a couple of the main highlights before we get to the camera. But I of course had to go for that twilight color. Now it's a little bit purple, it's a little bit blue, overall just looks really awesome. There's no headphone jack on it, but that's okay because I use Bluetooth headphones all the time anyways, I have a bunch of them. And of course that huge battery underneath is great, especially when I was using this as my main camera a few days back last week in Europe. Huawei took us out to a number of different places and I'm going to go through the footage and the photos from there because this camera has been able to provide some great content. Also, a lot of this video is gonna be more like a vlog. Uh, I'll just chime in every now and then to give you my thoughts on the camera. So our first stop was in Milan, Italy, and it was a great time to take a look at the camera in terms of still photography, but I still got a lot of video. I tried to focus on using 4K recording resolution. Unfortunately, when you use it at full resolution, the video camera does not add in that AIS, which is its version of stabilization. It's for this reason that even though I was happy with the video that was coming out of it in terms of detail and color, the jitteriness was something I obviously did not want in my video, so for the rest of the trip, I went back to 1080p. One more thing I should know is that in order to achieve some of the footage and the photos, I did use a high quality clip on wide angle lens. And you're actually seeing it here because my buddy Ricky has one too. He got it off my recommendation. More on that in a future video. I'm telling you right now, this thing makes a vlogger out of every phone. Which one? I need one of those because that's way tight. That's too tight. The next couple of days were spent in Germany, mainly going to the Leica headquarters, and then it was off to Paris, where I used this particular phone at 1080p resolution with all of its stabilization as a vlogging rig, and it did a great job. So let's take a look. Paris, Paris Francais, that's uh, wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so out behind us is probably some sort of transit, it's a strike, but it might be a transit strike. Yeah, she said uh, the train company, Elaine, she's in our group, she's from France, she yeah. said the train company is strike, struck, they, they've struck outside. Ah, okay. So. Yeah, for a while there, there were some loud bangs, and yeah, it's a little bit, it's a little bit jarring, but at least it's a transit strike, it's not anything too much more severe than that. But in any case, we are here in Paris now. One thing you'll notice is that I used slow motion quite often and one of my favorite parts about the slow motion mode inside of this camera is that it can do 120 frames at 1080p resolution. When it comes to vlogging, you might want to do some special effects. You might want to get a little bit fancy, considering there are so many different modes in the P20 and the P20 Pro that you can play with. However, for most vlogging applications, I just need good stabilization, which this has, good slow motion, which this has, and overall, good looking video, which the P20 Pro manages to provide. pictures all came out pretty great, especially in low light photography, but that was when one of the main modes that the P20 provides uh, really came in handy, and that is the night mode. What you're doing is just holding the phone up and the stabilization is making sure that it lines up all of the photos properly. In those four seconds, it takes a bunch of different photos at different exposures, kind of like a super or hyper HDR mode, and then when it puts it all together, you get a really evened out shot that might look a bit doctored, but ultimately looks pretty awesome. 
What's funny is using the night mode in more than just night situations. Uh, I noticed that a lot of the people using the P20 on this trip were using the night mode even in broad daylight situations, just so that the shadows and the highlights could be evened out. Uh, yes, it does look like a doctored photo, but ultimately you use it because it makes really cool looking shots. So smartphone photography and videography even are kind of at a peak right now. I don't want to say that's going to start coming down, but we are definitely seeing one of the best iterations of it here in this phone. And I think Huawei have tapped into something here that I think all the other manufacturers are going to start diving into. And it's the fact that with a smartphone, you have a ton of information and a ton of computing power that can be used to the camera's advantage. After all, that's the reason why the night mode is there, that's why HDR performs so well, that's why the stabilization in 1080p is so great, because it's using all of the information and all of the tools that a smartphone provides in order to create the best final product. You crop into the frame a little bit and then use the gyroscope or the accelerometer to figure out what the movement was like, and that helps compensate for the lack of an optical stabilization, except in the zoom lens. There are a couple of things that are missing, and I have voiced these concerns to people at Huawei who were with us on the trip, so hopefully we'll see these come in on other phones in the future. Now, if you go into the Pro mode, you can hit the Video mode, and then you have kind of a manual video mode, but not really. You can set a manual focus point before hitting record, but after that you can't really change where the focus point is, so you can't do rack focus or pull focus. And then, as you notice, there is an exposure compensation slider, but you don't get any settings for ISO or for shutter speed or for aperture on here. But with what we have right now, I can provide one quick tip. Uh, if you're going to be vlogging with this, you don't want the exposure and the focus to be jumping around when you have moving subjects or if you yourself are moving. The way that you can keep this from happening is by tapping on the subject that you want or by messing with the settings. But once you are good to go, you have to make sure to hold on the AF continuous button so that it locks the focus where you have it set. And the same thing goes for the exposure compensation so that the exposure is not jumping around when the video is moving. And so there you have it. This isn't even a full review of the phone. I might do that sometime later on, maybe after a couple more months of using this wonderful device, but I just wanted to sort of give some insight as to how I use this as a vlogging machine. I don't need too much. I just need a good slow motion mode. I need good video and I need good stabilization. And one of the best parts about the P20 Pro is that there's so much going on here that I actually don't need too many tools. I just use the phone, I move around smoothly, and as long as everything is set up the way I want it to be in the Pro mode, I'm good to go. So if you have the ability to get your hands on the P20 Pro, should you, as a vlogger of sorts, it's actually kind of a compelling device. Uh, the only thing that's missing is more manual controls inside of the video mode. And once that happens, maybe in the P30, whatever they call it coming up next, then you might be looking at one of the best vlogging tools that's out there without having to bring a full-size camera. If you want to see some extra photos from the P20 Pro that I took last week, you can head over to my Instagram at JVTechT and let me know what you think of those photos in those comment sections. Speaking of comment sections, let me know what you think about the P20 Pro down below. If you have this phone, let me know what you have been able to use it for and if you're not vlogging with it, I really suggest you give it a try. From there, you can subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and try to hit that bell over on the side so that you know when I put videos out. Uh, on a good week, I try to put out videos every weekday, but Otherwise, you can look forward to whenever I do post. And from there, I'm just going to go ahead and call it. And thank you so much for watching once again. And remember to enjoy your tea, everybody.